The footage you are about to see is me making a beginner mistake. I still make this mistake after years of doing this, and we're gonna talk about fixing it today. So stick around, and I'll help you out. I was completely in awe of you, which in hindsight is why I stupidly went in for a kiss, which I got denied. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> I was completely in awe of you, which in hindsight is why I stupidly went in for a kiss, which I got denied. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Hello my friend, welcome to another YouTube video. In this one, I'm going to be addressing two color grading tips that will possibly be saving unusable footage. These have helped me out in a big way and I hope that they help you out as well. But before we get to that, I wanna talk about a few things. And first, my art list giveaway that's going on right now. If you haven't gone and looked at that, I suggest that you watch my previous video about art list. It's really cool. They are sponsoring a giveaway and you still have, I think, 25 days to enter, if I remember right. And you'll win a free one year of art list. This is like a $200 value and only a few people have entered this giveaway because I'm a small YouTube channel. So if you found this video in time, you could go enter that giveaway and win something that I think is incredibly valuable, especially for beginner filmmakers. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that I appreciate the support so much on my channel and it's getting to the point where it's a little awkward because people want YouTube videos, but I have to pay rent and YouTube isn't paying me. So I'm having to make this weird balance right now. And I think everybody who tries to grow a new business has faced this. Uh, I remember facing it with videography early on, but YouTube is new to me. So, if you want to support, then you can do that by going and checking out my LUTs, uh, maybe purchasing those. I have a beginner's videography course. Uh, that might be something that you wanna look into. But I also have personal mentorships available. So if you want to get together one-on-one -on -one over Zoom and color grade your footage, or talk through starting your business, or anything under the sun that you can think of, I would love to help you and I offer one-on-one -on -one mentorships so that I can get very specific giving you advice instead of making YouTube videos for this big, huge, random array of people. So if you wanna get personal and book a mentorship, that would also help support the channel so that I can be making more videos and helping more people. But all of that said, let's go ahead and dive into this video about saving footage with keyframing. If you haven't heard of keyframing a color grade, basically what you're gonna do is you're going to start with the color grade and then you're gonna put markers in place that is going to modify your color grade over time. So this is really helpful in a few specific scenarios and there are two scenarios where you might have ruined your footage or nearly ruined your footage if not for being able to keyframe your color grade. So we're about to walk through auto white balance problems and changing your exposure problems. And I'm sure that you have done one of those two things possibly by mistake. Um, I know I have, and we're gonna look at some of that footage. Let's go ahead and dive into DaVinci Resolve 16. I'm not on 17 yet, but it should be the same thing. The concept still applies. So here we are in DaVinci. What we have here is first a wedding clip and this right here is an exposure change. While I was shooting, I changed the exposure. This is a total rookie mistake, and I still do this from time to time because while I'm shooting, I just get nervous that I'm like, oh, maybe this isn't quite right. I should change it because like, what if the highlights are too crazy? And then I change it and they're laughing. This was a great moment of emotion. Fortunately, it wasn't necessary, but we're gonna show you how to fix it just in case it's necessary for you. And then this one is just a shot out an airplane window. And right here, there's a major auto white balance shift. I was shooting an F-log. 
this happens very aggressively in F log, at least for me, uh, that auto white balance shift, but we're gonna try to clean it up just a little bit to make it less noticeable. But let's play this clip here so you can kind of get a context for what's going on. But after talking over dinner, I knew you were extremely special. I was completely in awe of you, which in hindsight is why I stupidly went in for a kiss, which I got denied. <laughs> okay, so there's this laughter, there's this great emotion, and in this moment, it's a lot of fun, and I changed the exposure. So let's open up the color tab and get to work. And you'll notice that I'm going to be starting with, I always start in my scopes to get a color grade and then I go to my waveform. Um, but let's go ahead and put on my Fujifilm LUT onto this footage. And let's see, you can tell from the waveform, but also just looking at it, it's probably a little warm here. So we're going to cool it down just a bit, not too much. And I'm okay with those highlights being gone. They're gone already. So I'm just gonna make it look, I'm just gonna make it look like a, you know, they were meant to be gone the whole time. Um, but I'm maybe gonna roll them off just a bit smoother if I can. You can see that over here. Um, so now I've got an image that I like. I could work a lot longer on this grade. I've already finished this film, but we're gonna to go to the keyframe here, and this is the important part. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go right to the part where I change, where I started changing the shutter speed. Okay, there you can see my steps. Um, and I'm actually going to, I already made a mistake, I need to base the color grade on the first section here. So I'm gonna go back to my waveforms. I'm gonna bring down the gain and I'm gonna bring down the lift just a bit. Okay, there we go. Pretty close to the same image still. So back to my waveforms, uh, back to my keyframes. So now I'm gonna turn on this little auto corrector tool and I'm gonna start skipping here through my keyframes, just pressing the arrow key one by one until I find my changes. And right there is my first one. So I'm gonna set an anchor point on the uh, frame before the change. So I'm just barely touching my offset wheel and it sets a corrector keyframe. And then I'm gonna click on my next frame here and then I'm gonna set just, I'm just setting my points right now. And then I'm gonna go to my next one and there's my next shift. Okay, so set my anchor point. And then, whoops. And then go to the change. Okay, the change happens there. Set another anchor point. And I'm gonna zoom in on these. And I think that's the last one. Yeah, so I just changed my exposure to steps here. So we want all of this here. We want all of these steps to end up matching this. And I'm gonna mute the video here so you can see. So what we want there is a stepless exposure change. So all we're gonna do is this is now locked in on that keyframe and everything before it is going to acknowledge that keyframe as the color grade. But we're gonna go to our next node and we're gonna just try to get a balance. So now we're gonna open up our waveforms and when we go back and forth, basically what's happening from our permanent grade to our permanent grade here to our keyframe, our first keyframe that we need to adjust, is we need to brighten up specifically probably the gamma. So that's already looking really close, but you can see his skin might be a little bit brighter in that second keyframe. 
So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to pull down that gamma and I'm going to lift or I'm going to push the gain gets confusing with lift. So that is looking pretty darn close. And now I'm going to go down here and, and I'm going to make sure that this matches this keyframe. So I'm going to set my gamma at three and I'm going to set my gain at 1.1. And now these two match. And then last one here. Okay, so we need to get these two waveforms to look as similar as we can. So I'm going to start with pushing the gamma just a bit. And then I'm going to push the gain. And I'm already right there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play this. And we're just going to watch this and see how do we feel. And look at that. Now there are, if you look really closely, there are minor changes happening in the color of this shot. But 95% of people aren't going to notice maybe a hundred and this is what it looked like before and or after and this is what it looked like before so pretty huge difference there and we'll go ahead and move on now to the next example and this right here is a huge white balance shift but before i'm going to put on my f log LUT so you can see look how huge that was from here to here, it just goes nuclear, way too warm. So we're gonna take the same principle that we just applied there, and we're gonna go right to where we see that color shift end, and we're gonna put, let's see, right there is probably where it gets to its warmest. We're gonna turn on the little auto keyframe, we're gonna put just a little point there, just barely dialing our offset. And then we're going to go to the beginning before it changes, probably right there, I think right there. And again, we're just going to drop a little point. And now we're going to go drop the temp just a bit to see if we can get those really close. Now, when we play this, you see there's still a white balance shift, but if we finagle these, if we kind of just move them around, wiggle just a little bit, we can hopefully get to the point where it's not nearly as aggressive as it was coming out of the camera, going from possibly ruining a great shot to, whoops, put an extra keyframe in there going from possibly ruining a great shot to that shot at least being usable. And you can, you know, if the, if the color shift is very slight at the beginning and then it becomes really aggressive here at the end, like it kind of seems like, you can always do an extra keyframe and, and ease into it even more. So, you know, so here I go to 70, minus 70, and then here I go to minus 190. So yeah, you can still see a few bumps in that keyframing, but when we watch it back without any help at all, okay, so this is no help at all. Just a huge color shift really fast. And then when you watch it after, there's a little bit of play going on. But again, with the bouncing and in the context of a video, you're probably not going to notice that. So huge difference. Well, that's it for this one. Again, art list. Go check out that giveaway. I love making videos here on YouTube. I would love your help in continuing to make more of them. And I hope this color grading tutorial helped you out because it's saved me a bunch of times when I've made 
these rookie mistakes. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.